Hello and welcome to a recap of today's open source hangout. Today we've been looking at some community contributions for two open source projects here on GitHub. First, we'll take a look at the pull requests that were merged for the OpenCivi Wiki project. You can find this project at github.com slash civiwiki slash OpenCiviWiki. OpenCiviWiki has passed 90 contributors today. We're following the all contributors um, process where we acknowledge types of contributions other than code. A lot of times open source projects seem uh, to emphasize source code as the primary way of getting involved or contributing. What we want to highlight is there's many ways to contribute to these types of projects. Finding bugs, suggesting ideas, improving the documentation, um, adding automated testing, improving accessibility are among the many ways you can contribute to these types of projects. And we will try to add and affirm every type of contribution. This open, sorry, the uh, all contributors bot or community is a way of kind of acknowledging those. It has uh, some default types of contributions and it has a bot that will come and uh, when we receive a pull request or a forum discussion or some other way um, we can indicate that somebody else has contributed we'll mention that person's usually their github profile and then the bot will add them to this table the icon and link to their either web page or their github profile so that's a quick aside we um, have been going through some pull requests from an existing uh, contributor, one of our core maintainers, Gorkum Arslan, and uh, some new contributors here. Gorkum has um, pretty much kind of <laughs> put the uh, finishing touches on some important bug reports. I'm a bit tired. It's kind of been a long day, but uh, we're working on simplifying our code base and ex uh, improving the developer experience at the same time. And part of that simplification is removing features as well as removing kind of code bloat in the form of um, we were previously maintaining two projects, a front end and a back end, and then the API integration from the back end. But even the back end had some front end templates. It was kind of a hodgepodge and it was not sustainable for this size of a project. I don't think it's a good uh, code architecture for most projects. So we're going back to the basics. We're using full stack Django. That means we have to port some of the JavaScript templates back over to Django templates and simplify again the user experience and the uh, improve the maintainability of the project. So Gorkum ported our accounts templates uh, from Backbone to Django template syntax and fixed a couple of bugs while they're in the those areas of the code. Uh, one bug I happened to report while they were working. Uh, there are still some issues, uh, some Tests are failing, but uh, this project is under such heavy revision. We're um, kind of expecting uh, things to be broken in various states of brokenness. So that's kind of okay. But once we pull through this major refactoring and reorganization, we'll be able to start adding features and focusing on actually developing the idea and not spreading so thinly across you know, a front end and back end project. We have a new contributor. Mazin Ramadan, who has graciously improved our contributing guide by adding instructions for resolving conflicts, specifically with our poetry package manager. Poetry does a lot of really useful things for us. It helps us keep our dependencies up to date as well as at their latest compatible versions. One of the drawbacks is that lock file that it uses to keep track of the versions and um, validate their file size with like these hashes um, also creates a hash for the entire bundle of all the packages at a particular version combined and that means that you can't at least to my knowledge use regular um, git merge um, approaches with the po poetry package or the poetry.lock, sorry, not package.lock. 
because it has to regenerate the poetry.lock based on changes to the dependencies, dependency graph. We have a lot of developer experience improvements going on right now. That means we're updating our dependencies quite a lot and introducing conflicts in this really large file. But there nonetheless is a way to resolve those conflicts. Uh, it's just a bit of a head scratcher the first time you encounter it. And it's caused a couple of our contributors to kind of abandon their pull request and reopen it from scratch using the latest um, poetry lock. Just not an ideal solution. So I think these instructions are fairly straightforward. And we can refer contributors to those. Hopefully there will be some resolution to this in the broader poetry ecosystem because I don't think it's unique to our project. In any case, thanks again, Mazin. And here's a, an example. When we get a new contributor, we will mention the all contributors bot and uh, they using some keywords, the contributor name and uh, you know from the emoji key, what type of contribution they made. And then the all contributors bot opens a pull request that updates our project uh, contributors metadata by adding a new dictionary here with the login and display name as well as the avatar and profile URL. And this is basically whatever you use for your GitHub um, profile or homepage. If that's not defined, then it'll just use your GitHub profile page, as well as an, uh, an array or a list here of types of contributions. Then it updates some HTML, uh, increments the contributor count badge, and uh, maintains this alphabetized list of contrib uh, contributors. We don't want to necessarily uh, sort this, uh, what you say, chronologically. We're just alphabetically seems to make more sense in an egalitarian way. Okay, let's continue onward. Uh, Seth Engel also has a uh, first time contribution helping us to simplify our project migrations by adding Django linear migrations. The new package, um, the package needed us to specify the latest auto-generated version of each of the migrations. Notice there were changes to the poetry lock, which could introduce <laughs> conflicts that I just mentioned. Uh, they also went ahead and um, cleaned up um, a deprecation warning that we were getting in the Django terminal. This use localization setting is no longer needed. It, in Django 4, it defaults to true. And in Django 5, it's going to be removed. And Django will automatically localize uh, all content that's rendered into the templates. So Seth went out of their way and uh, made an, a little extra improvement here while working to uh, install this Django linear migrations. Those are kind of nice, uh, shows nice um, attention to detail and craftsmanship approach, software development. So thanks again, Seth. We've made sure to include you in our All Contributors Guide and the issues, all of these issues uh, should be linked to Hacktoberfest. So anybody who's a Hacktoberfest uh, participant can get credit by contributing to OpenCivia Wiki. And I'll try to spin to these last two fairly quickly, but this was, uh, we had some documentation that was in ODT format or open document text. Uh, which is basically a word processor format from the uh, Document Foundation. And Git is really oriented towards plain text, uh, norm normally source code or other types of documentation. This markdown format is very common. So essentially what this um, pull request by Dieter Michel is taking two um, ODT files and breaking out the content into markdown. and including the pictures so quite uh, quite good work and uh, that wasn't i think uh, yeah Dieter that was Dieter's first uh, contribution in this project i believe they are working on another task or maybe had uh, another task merged after this one i'm not sure i'm having a hard time keeping track of everything now over to companionship care riddick pandeli i think had stopped by the live stream uh, yesterday perhaps and was asking about some tasks and I've been adding these and tagging everything with um, with uh, Hacktoberfest yes making sure that that's there well and you know signaling that it's a good one to take 
Uh, this one's a user uh, developer experience improvement that will automatically refresh the browser when you're making changes to the server file so you don't have to hit that control or command R. It just saves you a couple keystrokes. Again, we're just trying to make these projects real friendly to new contributors, keeping things simple and as close to Django core uh, development paradigm as possible. That way people can get up and running and make their first contributions to open source. Well, that's been a recap of today's open source live code hangout. If you'd like to get involved with this or other projects, you can stop by github.com slash companionship care or github.com slash open CiviWiki or CiviWiki slash open CiviWiki. And we can get you pointed towards um, some ways you can contribute. Uh, stop on up by our discussion if you're not particularly uh, interested in coding or if you rather contribute ideas or some design uh, or other types of skills to the project. All contributors are welcome. Have a great day and I hope you're doing well.